How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number five of the Facebook Hackers Show. Today, I've got Adam Miosevic, and uh, pretty incredibly, he has just cracked the $1 million revenue mark for his online e-commerce business. And uh, what's more impressive is the fact that he's done it in under 12 months. So he's obviously doing something right, and I'm asking him all of the hard questions today for those e-commerce owners of you out there, or those of you who are looking to get your toes wet and start your own online business. This is gonna be a great episode for you. Before we start, we'll let you know, I'm uh, offering a free 30 minute consult for those of you who need help fixing your ads or just wanna make sense of the Facebook advertising platform. And if you'd like to take me up on that offer, all that I ask is you screenshot this episode on Spotify, tag me in your Instagram story, at Rebel Lachlan, and uh, I'll DM you with a link to book that 30 minute free chat. Let's get into the episode. All right, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, uh, thanks for joining us. I've got Adam Milosevic here, a uh, guy I've done a, a bit of work for and a uh, really awesome story I want to share with you today. Um, Adam, fairly recently, and um, his business partner, they have an e-commerce store. Um, and full disclosure or non-disclosure, we're not going to reveal the actual product uh, so that we're not creating any competitors in the space because they are absolutely killing it at the moment. And they've just passed $1 million in revenue and in sales for their e-commerce store. So, Thanks very much for joining us, Adam. Pleasure to have you, my friend. Yeah, yes. It feels good to be here. So uh, where are you at the moment? Uh, currently in Hamburg, Germany. Um, been here for the last six months. Uh, I've got my business partner here and, yeah, we've just been six months of hard lockdown, like probably the hardest lockdown you can imagine, tied in with mm. a German winter. But it's yeah. been really good to allow us really to really focus on working on the companies that we're growing. Yep. No, that's awesome, man. Well, um, obviously, like having done a bit of work with you and there's been, I think it had been an understatement to say there's been uh, hurdles <laughs> and obstacles to overcome. Um, but I'd love for you to share your story uh, with our audience and, you know, tell, uh, sort of explain where you started, where the idea came from in as, as best details you can sort of share. Yeah, definitely. It's actually quite funny in terms of how I started because I was in Bali at the time and it was the very start of the COVID pandemic before any lockdowns happened. And I had a friend um, I was working with, uh, we were doing like closing high ticket sales over the phone at the time. And he was just like, you may question it, like it was probably a bit dodgy, but he was selling face masks. Yep. <laughs> and, I, and I was sitting next to him. And I just kept hearing, he had the Shopify app and every 10 seconds, he's like, sale, 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 sale. It was like, it was stupid. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I got to do that. Um, so pretty much after hearing that, getting a little bit jealous, I, uh, I bought a course on basic drop shipping, e-commerce, like the very beginner stuff, um, how to run ads. And I, and I decided to start a store, started with a product um, and, it, and it just took off. It was meant to be as a little, the product itself was, I won't say what the product is, but it was a weird supplement product, a little bit different. Um, and yeah, it basically turned in from like, it was meant to be a bit of a joke, to be honest. Um, <laughs> like just something to see that would work and, and it did. But yeah, I mean. And that was your first like, product, just to be clear, that you went to market with? <laughs> first product. Man, I'm people still be watching it. this like, fuck that guy <laughs> yeah yeah great it's, i love uh, it <laughs> yeah it was pretty good like in terms of, in terms of like revenue like the first month was, it was five grand just testing it but then the second month went up to 200 grand it was stupid um, why do you think that is you've gone from 5k in sales to whatever times that is to 200 000. Well, yeah well the intention i had like I, I don't know if you remember seeing the product page that we had, the website. It wasn't really much to look at, but the whole purpose of it, like I knew, I know when you're starting a company, I know where anything, or the first thing and the only thing you need to focus on is sales. So I wrote whatever I had to write to sell that product, um, yep. which, you know, it was a bit questionable, especially being a supplement product. I wasn't lying. I never lied, but I was definitely making the truth sound really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but going in attention, just really, really focusing on those sales, focusing on that one product and just selling as much as I, as I could and all the money, like I didn't pay myself a wage for 
about 10 months, but that was just by choice because all the money I, we made is we reinvested it into building a pretty big brand that today is is worth a lot more than what we were making at the time yeah. as, as, a, as a company if we wanted to sell the company to. Um, and also just, you know, we're still going. We still have that consistency. And I think, you know, as, as we all get older, I think that's more important. Just Absolutely. It's coming in every day. Absolutely. And so how long was it from getting your first sale to sort of getting hitting that 5K mark in revenue? What was the start and sort of time period around that? Two weeks from the launch. Two weeks. So to yeah. you, just to sort of go back there, to you, was that like, yep, we've got a winner? Yeah, I, I knew I was making money, and I, and yeah, I, I was like I was still figuring out my track at the time, but I knew I was like there's more. Like after a week, I wasn't putting any more money into the company. I was just reinvesting everything, and it had that compounding effect, which was really cool. I mean, I it, like I've got quite a few more stores now, so I totally understand it's never that easy. Usually, I yeah. did get very lucky um, in that sense, but. I all, but we've got we going back looking back into that we do have seven stores now they're all profiting we there's a few products that failed but it all goes back to that just that mindset finding that one product and really focusing on the sales and doing whatever it takes to sell it and then optimize everything later on yeah um, absolutely now profit. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking this um, the course that you follow as specific as you can without it getting bogged down in the details, how are you setting up your Facebook campaigns? Uh, if you're looking at Facebook campaigns, basically $5 a day per ad set, 12 ad sets, a bunch of different interest targeting right around that. So not the same and just see what sticks. If it sticks, duplicate it five times and then start. Uh, this, this is actually kind of foolproof. It keeps working for me for every brand I do. Keep doing that. Um, duplicate it and then the ones that are winning, scale them up to like $50, $100 a day, turn off the dead ones and start building out lookalike audiences. <clears throat> Sorry, based on uh, purchase campaigns in the past 180 days of a retargeting campaign. And I try to keep my, like, I, I seem to get consistent results, but I don't overcomplicate it. Like if anyone who is a real big Facebook marketing expert, probably look at my t- accounts, probably say they, they are super ghetto but they're super simple and they work. And it's all, it's always for me, top of funnel that I convert the most out. I, I had like, I, with that type of strategy, um, trying to like trying to keep it simple. I can always be profitable that. And I mean, middle of the funnel come is usually more focused on back end products and not the top product because the top product is still making me good margins on the front end. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. and um, obviously understanding a, a bit about your product, the value proposition is very clear up front, very clear. Yeah. So, uh, and it, you know, even the entry level cost or the investment for someone or a customer to buy that product, um, you know, I'd still sort of consider within that impulsive purchase range. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Especially with Facebook, you want people to make, you want people to really see the value in it that you don't want them to feel confused. And obviously they need it. The price needs to be at the right price point so they can make that impulse purchase. And I think if you're starting out on Facebook, you have to have a very impulsive purchase product, right? Like people just Mm -hmm. see it and they, and they really want, they don't need, they don't necessarily need it, but they really want it. Um, And to, to the point where they look at the money and the money, like the value or what they want outweighs the cost of the product. And then people just buy it all day long. Yep. Yep. Um, and so what were your next steps to going from 5k in revenue in two weeks to then 200k the next month? Duplicating and increasing budgets. <laughs> uh, That's great. <laughs> like you, I usually only have three or four campaigns running. Like I don't have, like a hundred different ones um, and just, yeah. And that, and that works. I mean, I don't try to beat the system with Facebook. Like I don't try to, like I, like I, for me, I see myself more as a business owner than a media buyer. So I don't want to worry about the little fine numbers, like the little, little bit. I just, as long as I know I'm profiting front end and I can keep scanning that, it's going to take, so I don't have to put all my time into it so I can focus on the other parts of the business. So that works. I mean, I'm sure if I really 
like looked at every single like city, every country, every little age bracket, every combination. I could probably get it even better, but it's usually pretty good for me at that. And it's consistent um, every day. So that's what, that's what I like. Well, a million in revenues, um, nothing to turn your nose up about. So you've done something right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good year. <laughs> Actually, sorry. I didn't even specify how long from the first dollar spent on Facebook to a million dollars in revenue. Yeah, we started, I can't remember if we started in April or May. I think it was, I have to double check. It might've been the 13th of April or the 13th of May, but we hit a million dollars about a week. So it was under a year, just a week under a year. Yeah. Under wow. 12 months. And that's because we had a lot of issues too. We would have done it probably a lot quicker, but I mean, as people know on this podcast, we probably do Facebook ads, anything and everything can happen. And, do that mm. and, and, you, and you saw it as well. We went yep. through it. We were in Facebook jail for a little bit. Absolutely, man. Yeah, definitely broke out though. Holy shit. That was, um, man, yeah. <laughs> a client of mine at the moment, uh, we went through 11 ad account bans. Um, rep couldn't tell us why. I was going to say, those are rookie, num- those are rookie numbers. No, I'm not kidding. It. It was, I'm not kidding. It was like 11 times in a week. She sells frying pans, frying pans and pressure cookers. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid. Like, I mean, it works on a reputation-based system. So mm-hmm. even if you're doing everything right, but your account is but has a low reputation with Facebook, they're going to just yeah. ban stuff like yeah. automatically. It's super, super frustrating. Um, but what, but it's weird when you're you're in if you're in Facebook jail, it feels like you can never beat Facebook. But if you're out mm-hmm. of it, everything just works. So yeah. like you get, but it's, you get kind of stuck in those two worlds. Um, and yeah, unlinking everything, like that's what I've had to do. I mean, I with a lot of stores we use Shopify, but you can put multiple domains into the Shopify mm. and that works for us. So we have like, yeah, we got the different store names like with slight variations. I mean, I'm at the point where like I'm not I love Facebook for its media buying, but I don't love the company itself. Like, mm. I just don't like the way they operate for the for the people who are spending money. So I like building a proper brand on, on Facebook. I'll use it to get people in, but we want to build the brand on different channels. And yeah. also I'd be meaning to ask actually, um, how's TikTok going for you guys? That, I was looking into that. So I haven't, we haven't done it. We haven't started, but I'm, I'm starting to get the feel for it. Um, yeah. Everyone's starting to talk about it. It's, uh, I could be like, I'm, I was actually planning on launching some campaigns this week, just some yeah. basic campaigns and see what, what happens. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Gut feeling, gut feeling tells me there's something going on there. I think so. Yeah, I think so. If nothing yeah. else, man, just, um, I mean, if you can acquire a new customer for a little bit less than what you're profiting on the front end, then like CPMs and the, the lower cost per clicks and everything around those proxy metrics is just so cheap on average, three to four times cheaper than Facebook. Um, and yeah. very simple structure. The only problem which you may have already heard of, I've found with that TikTok is, um, the pacing is ridiculous. If you have a hundred dollar day budget, you know, you might spend a hundred dollars gently over the first day, second day, third day. And then the next day, hundred dollars spent before 10 AM. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. the only thing I'm hearing in, in my circles. And I've seen it with um, a couple of brands that we've sort of done TikTok tests with is the pacing side of things. So we set very, very tight cost caps with, um, or bid caps with TikTok and that sort of reins it in, but you know, generally doesn't feed out a lot of our spend within the day, but still gives us a bit more control. Yeah, well, I definitely want to look into it. I mean, a big one for me, I'm moving into it soon is influencers. Um, yep. Just because, yeah, I think that there's just something there as well. And the good thing with influencers, I like to have control and not be dependent on a platform. I mean, I mean, you still depend on the influencers, but there's so many of them, right? It's not like someone can turn off your influencer account um, by choice. So you can just keep doing it. Um, so is that um, tied in with affiliates? Like we, we are on a few big affiliate platforms now and we are getting quite a few sales from that. Um, awesome. with little with little effort and i know if we put a bit of work into it um that, that's definitely something there and as i mentioned before national television in the us that will be an interesting one <laughs> yeah that's phenomenal man hey um yeah. what would other than facebook jail what were some of the maybe one or two obstacles big obstacles and hurdles that you kind of had to navigate with that business yeah um dealing with suppliers 
um, has been a big one. Like just making sure, obviously, we had one supplier that we bought two products and they actually took about 10 months for us to get it, which was, and they're like the big supplier um, in, in the US. And the other one is just in, dealing with the inventory management as well. Obviously, there, there are other issues besides Facebook, especially if you're not delivering or fulfilling. Like we haven't, fortunately, we haven't had this issue. Um, but PayPal and Stripe going to charge back hell is not something you want to deal with. I almost, I'd much rather lose my uh, Facebook account than my uh, payment processes. Because that kind of, they just kill, they just, yeah, you're done. If you can't, people can't give you money, uh, you don't have a business. So fortunately, that's not a problem for us, but we did run out of stock for a week and a half, which was, or two weeks, which there was like issues with like, like freight companies and stuff being delayed and yeah we started to get a few and we got a little sweaty but not the big um, not the big tanker that went sideways in that canal (laughs) yeah no no well yeah our products are in the u.s now mate manufactured for for that brand anyway other brands we're still dealing with yeah the chinese stuff but still yeah still having like product quality issues there but we are working with suppliers to get custom built products, which is actually working really well. And yeah, I guess, yeah, I mean, that would be an issue for a lot of people if they are shipping from China is making sure product quality is good. Probably won't be in the beginning, but once you start, but it doesn't matter. Everyone like don't, I wouldn't even, if you're starting out, I wouldn't even worry about product quality, just worry about sales and then read then constantly improve the product, Mm. test the product, make sure the market wants it and then improve it, make it better than everyone else's. I bet that statement has triggered a lot of people. Don't even worry about product quality. Can we dive into that a little bit more? Yeah. Well, a lot of people who worry about it or put a lot of energy into making the perfect website with the perfect product. And they don't actually drive any traffic to it, right? And then they do all this um, and then they don't get any sales. And then they've wasted a lot of money. They've wasted maybe a few months, maybe six months, maybe a year building this out. And then it just doesn't do anything, right? So product quality, I mean, obviously don't sell anything dangerous. Don't sell anything that's going to hurt people. Don't, and obviously don't lie. I mean, keep it very, like, for example, a good example right now, is we're, we're, we're scaling a t-shirt on Facebook and it's just taken off. Like it's actually probably, it's doing on, on level with this first brand. Like the first month, this month, we've done like 25, 30K in revenue on it. And the shirts, apparently like the shirt, we only found out recently, but the shirt itself is way too small for everyone. But especially it's like Chinese measurements compared to people in the US. Um, and that's been a bit of a problem, but now we're working with our supplier. Now we know this and we've got the money. We refund people if it's a problem, obviously. We don't, we don't, yeah, and that, that's another thing, customer service too. You've got to be on top of that. You don't, you don't ignore your customers. They are who make your business. Um, so we apologize. We let them know. And now we're working with our supplier to get everything custom fit. Like we've gone, we've got one of the girls. She's gone through all the Nike stores to find the measurement charts. It's like making this size. And now we're going to have our own inventory, our own logo on it. Now the product quality, we know this product is selling. And now we're improving the quality for the customers, right? So mm. when, so going back into don't worry about product quality in the very beginning, just test products. Like don't get hung up on the small details. Like you saw, you were in my first page, right? I'm not too, I'm not too, you were before we got the website made, right? It was the most basic, ugly scene, right? And Well, you say that, but I mean, my first website was built on GoDaddy, like website builder in like Uh, early 2000s. And I was, and I thought it was the shit. (laughs) And I look back on it now and I was uh, like, why did anyone pay any money to that thing? (laughs) Yeah, but early 2000s, it probably was the shit back then. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, what it, where I'm not we're kidding, at man. Now. Like some of the buttons were not rendering within mobile, were not mobile responsive, and I was like, ah, yeah. that'd be right, leave it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But who, knows, who needs mobile? Interesting, you bring that up, and I'm glad we went into it because I think it's very easy, especially someone new to the online space. You know, maybe they're listening to this podcast and they're like, wow, this Adam guy's had a lot of success straight off the bat. 
or they might um, see some other um, educators or people from around the internet or ads themselves and people making hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars through e-commerce, drop shipping, everything else, you name it. And it's very easy to get emotionally attached to a product because you think it's good, right? Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, the general population have an attraction towards that product. And so it makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm massive on lean startups, huge on lean startups. Like the yeah. Mandalorian last year, my, my brother and a couple of close friends and I loved watching the Mandalorian every week when it came out on Friday. And so I was like, I'm just going to make some t-shirts and fling it and see if people like this kind of nineties hip hop slang integration with the Mandalorian, the Star Wars series. Anyway, spent all of about maybe two weeks. Um, I won't go into too much detail because I've got a whole nother video on it. Spent all of about two weeks, spent $700 in ad spend, didn't sell one t-shirt. I'm like, right, I'm done with that. Move on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah. nothing, yep. nothing was perfected. Like the very simple Shopify theme, very simple designs. Got to go on Fiverr to make it for 35 USD. Um, yep. But very quickly, I was able to see from some of these pro proxy metrics that it was not something that was going to be profitable on the front end. Um, so that yep. makes a lot of sense when you think about when you think about it from a okay, how much time do I want to invest in perfecting this product and my website and all of these other assets that you could spend a lot of time on? Really, as you say, it makes um, it makes a whole lot more sense to find your revenue ASAP and find your sales as soon as possible. Yeah, and and it's the only way you're going to grow a company. I mean, if you're not if you're not getting sales, you don't have a business. You can't call yourself a business owner if you don't have sales coming in. You've just got a hobby um that you're working on because it's the lifeblood of a company and yeah just having that being able to rapidly test is what you need right and, one, and once you've got that then you can build an awesome brand you can improve the website you can do all that and the best thing about it is you don't even have to do it you can pay someone to do it because you've got sales coming in and they can do it usually a lot better than you and yeah and that's and that's what i work with every time it's all about finding the product to get sales in and then what, once you start growing and you got to the like the really high revenue mark and it's super consistent and you start adding back-end products and you start getting those back-end sales and then you keep growing the brand and improving upon it every day but in, in the beginning like i like i actually caught up with someone from australia in berlin last week and she was telling me she had a business partner and they wanted to buy these uh they wanted to sell these phone cases the necklace ones i'm sure people have seen them and they basically, they did it for six months and they sold four products and they built out this really nice website. They built a thousand, they bought, purchased a thousand units to have them shipped to Australia because the girl wanted to ship locally and all that. And then she basically, they didn't sell any and they got all these products and why not just test from China? Product quality may not be the best. I mean, another thing, if you feel really guilty about it, you can always test the product and refund the customers and then improve quality because at least you know it's going to sell you know it's going to take off and you can and you're going to work with it but everyone does it the opposite way everyone most people I speak to they get so hung up about the website the product page and everything that they don't ever do anything or when it actually comes to doing stuff they realize it doesn't take off and then they get super emotionally drained and they quit and they say it doesn't work um <laughs> yeah you know the irony of um <laughs> the story you just shared a uh, client, um, person I mentored here in Perth sells exactly those things, those necklace cases, and just sold them in droves on a Squarespace website, a Squarespace yeah. website, a lot of different creative testing and whatnot, um, which I'd love to talk about in a second with you guys and your brand. But, um, you know, it was just simple, very simple structure, top of funnel, little bit of retargeting, probably only about 5% of budget spent on retargeting because it was that kind of within that impulsive purchase range, you know, it was about $17 yeah. Australian all the way up to 32, 35. Um, so very easy. You can make a decision very quickly. If you think that this product is going to solve a problem for you. And if it does, Hey, presto here, we even have afterpay. Yeah. How often are you guys testing new creative at the moment? Are you pretty well set on one or two or three that you've got? Well, yeah, basically one, two or three. Like we haven't, really found the limit in terms of our spend on it um with this brand but we we have gotten a we have bought on a creative team and they're basically making consistent creators for us so we are constantly testing a little bit but i mean if it's working i don't want why fix what's not when it's not broken why try to fix it mm. right yeah age old saying right there 
yeah, if it becomes a problem, then we'll change it. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, I get, I, I, maybe we're lucky, but like, I'm not sure. But we've tested a lot of products and usually once there's a product that's winning, it can, if you do it right, it can stay pretty consistent, 20, like evergreen, unless you're looking at seasonal products. Like I'm not a fan of seasonal products, summer, winter products. Yeah. Um, or anything like that. I like evergreen products, like anything mm. from T-shirts to supplements to even pet stuff. Everyone has a pet 20, 365 days a year. Mm. Um, if, you do, if you're doing seasonal stuff, it's great for like maybe three, four months and it might die off and then you have to wait until like, that time comes again. Then you have to do all that work finding another product in the meantime. Yeah. Um, so That's why it would yeah. scare the shit out of me to own an ice cream shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ice here in Germany, they love ice cream in the winter. I'm not too sure why, but what's the season in Germany at the moment? It is summer. It's summer. It is yeah. summer. Of course, it is. Yeah, Northern yeah, Hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the cold. I like the cold when I'm working. If it's too, if it's a summer day, I don't do much. Well, I being on a computer, I have to race outside every day. Yep. Yep. Uh, what was your first one, two, or three hires, and what were their roles when you guys started to scale up? Yeah, um, basically, just to touch base on that, I, I, was, I was outsourcing everything from day one. That's because okay. I am super lazy, super lazy. But in terms of full term, the full, first full-time person we hired, which was basically as soon as I saw the sales coming in because I didn't want to do it, was customer service. Um, so we, it, customer service is important, right? And it's not just for Facebook. It's also for, it's also for, if you want to build a brand, if you want to repeat customers, you don't want to eventually get wrecked by any business bureau things, which I don't know anyone that that's happened to, but also PayPal, um, your Stripe accounts, you need to be on top of customer service and it can be pretty inexpensive. It doesn't like you can hire someone from the Philippines. Like we've got, I've got one girl in Bali and I've got another girl now in Argentina. They work super hard, really good at what they do. Um, they're doing live chat. They're on the phones now. They're replying to all the messages, all the Facebook stuff. Um, and just to be on top of that makes people feel, trust the brand. They keep coming back. So, and you can't, yeah, you can't ignore people. <laughs> you can't ignore customers. And I think that's a big mistake a lot of people do like we we purchased a store uh recently and then we we saw the store like it's, it's fine for us because we know what we're doing but we looked at their trust pilot um for that particular brand and clearly they ignored every single person because there were so many unhappy people on that which i don't get it's not hard you just you just do general general emails um like if people have a problem just give them a solution and don't be afraid. I'm never afraid to refund people. I mean, obviously, I stick to my refund policy. I always offer a 30-day money-back refund if they're not happy with it, which I think is important in early in the early phases of e-com when you're when you're super dependent on a platform to grow. Um, if you got organic traffic and and you're on top of that, and then it should be fine. But yeah, obviously, other companies like Facebook, Google may or may not. Pay. Google's pretty good actually. But Facebook will definitely penalize you if people are complaining about yeah. that. But that's dependent. You just look at your profit margins and see if, if you can afford to refund people and still walk away with money in the end, just do it. Like, like, especially if you're still working on that product quality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, customer service is just so straightforward, even with um, uh, our pet products brand. It's one of the great things about it is I got my mom to do the customer um, service because she's been doing customer service for like 15 years. So it was just such a yeah. natural progression. I can sit back and push buttons on a, on a laptop. So it was great. I, I, I honestly think mums are the best to hire. Right? Because they, yeah, they, yeah, they are they, very they nurturing personalities and they exactly what yeah. you're about to say. They love chatting, definitely. You know, chatting, they can work from home, especially young mums. Like they, they don't want to have to leave their children. They can work from home in the e-com space at least. So it's definitely, and, they, and they're grateful for the job too, right? Which is fair. It's a good job for them. It gives them, you know, it allows them to do what they need to do and helps, it helps out the brand a lot as well. So what's next on the plate for Adam? Um, well, we, we've called a company we've, we came up with, we thought it was a funny name. So we named it basically a, a company called Moonwhale. 
and that's basically a Moonwhale. portfolio. It just sounded cool. We just saw, it is we cool. saw a photo. It sounds some crypto-ish, but it's not it has nothing to do with crypto. Um, it's basically just a portfolio of e-com stores. So at the moment, we're basically buying, scaling, improving, adding new products. We're just kind of building that overall portfolio of multiple brands. I can see on a few big ones to really scale them out. Um, now, e-commerce wise, our goal here is to eventually flip stores, like grow them to a point and then sell them um, for very high ticket. Like some of them might like 10, 20, 50, 100 million dollars eventually, which is a big number, but I think it's possible. Um, like we still got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of problems that we still have to deal with. Um, and we're still learning a lot. Like I've only been doing econ for 12 months. Um, so I'm learning so much every day. So that's kind of where a lot of my energy is going to. In terms of econ, I'm also focusing on retail, product improvement. And it's just a journey, right? This whole business element is just a journey. I'm meeting new people. Like I'm learning new networks. I'm kind of starting to build up a bit of a reputation. So I'm, I'm, it's kind of opening a few doors. So kind of going with the flow. Um, living in Germany, maybe come back to Perth one day when ever it's possible it's been quite interesting and last question before i let you go i'm sure you got wonderful things to do in the rest of your day uh what's a question that i should have asked you that i haven't asked you yet it's a good question the biggest advice from people i always want to give is like how do you start you know because a lot of people are always like well oh, this is so hard like i when i when i initially started this i was I, I had I had a bit of money coming in because I was doing high ticket sales, but I initially started, I was quite broke actually. I was in Bali with about $1,000 in the bank account, which was interesting. Um, but then I had other stuff coming in later. It was just kind of that weird plateau bit. So don't you just got to start. If you get, like, if you got a job and you can lose two, 300, like if you can but not lose, but invest two, $300 a week and have money constantly coming back in, there's no reason why you can't keep doing this. You may test you, you may you may lose money in the beginning. You may lose time in the beginning. But if you keep doing it, it's it, like e-commerce itself, even if you're not aiming for high scale, is a awesome side hustle. Just really fun. Um, it's really fulfilling. You learn a lot. You're stimulating your mind. Um, and it, to, leading away, it's not just e-commerce. It's just, I think it's just running a business, having sales, just the whole element. So I mean, if people want to begin, just do it. Literally just rip that band out off and start today. Absolutely, man. Well, look, um, on that note, I won't take up any more of your time. I know you're a very busy man, but uh, hey, man, I think you should write a book. <laughs> I think you've got some words <laughs> yeah. of wisdoms in there. But uh, thank you very much for your time, Adam. Really appreciate it. Good to catch up again, my friend. All right. And um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, you too, Rebel. Thanks for your time.